Hi everybody, thanks for watching today. I am so pleased to be here with Debbie Happy Cohen today. Um, I'm Emma Worley from Gossip Gals and we're going to be having um, a really cool chat today because us two ladies have joined each other and we're on each side of the pond, if you will, and we have a very, very strong bond in our heart for what we want to bring to people and how we seem to bring people together in the world is um, a really um, strong vibe that we have together. So the way that we're both impacting the world, um, it just felt like the right thing to do for us to have a chat about it and find out a little bit more about each other in a way that is more explorative and um, we can shine a light on um, lovely Debbie's skills and what she's doing with the joy-based living as well. Um, so Debbie, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure, thank you, Emma. I just love you. You just speak right to my heart with what you do and who you are. Um, my name is Debbie Happy Cohen, and I'm the founder of Joy Based Living. And Joy Based Living is, well, is partly a community and partly a a bunch of really solid gold information for people to become established in themselves in a way that they can rock inside of community or create their own communities. Because I've been a member of communities for many, many years and I'll just jump right in. I'll just jump right in. So imagine that you're like the captain of a ship. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll read this to you so you don't have to worry about getting all the little fine details. I'll show it up close in case somebody wants to screenshot it or something. So what happens is there's, there's a connection to self, there's spirituality, and there is a peak performance or authentic flourishing, okay? And so we can look at this like counseling, clergy, and coaching. Now, what happens is, because I've been in all these different kinds of communities, is that when, let's say I'm in a spiritual community, a lot of times in a spiritual community, people either don't want to talk about trauma at the depths mm -hmm. of it because you don't want to blame anybody and God's going to take care of it anyway. And, and you know, I, I'm being sincere. Like, I'm not making fun. I'm not being sarcastic. Like, this is what people say. It's like, no, be positive. You know, a lot of positive spiritual yeah, things. With the toxic, um, I mean, I do believe that there is, like, positive toxicity. It's a, there can be a positive toxicity. Yeah. yeah I've been part of um, things like that as well. And sometimes you just need to go a bit deeper. Sometimes you really need to get to the core of why this is stumbling you all the time and like why these patterns keep coming back. And you can't do that without going to that space. Exactly. Um, so yeah, yeah. And then what happens is people within many spiritual communities who don't have like all three of these will end up kind of stuck in a positive conversation and you see them not growing. And so that's why I left a lot of communities that I had joined and then um, trauma communities often don't want to talk about peak performance or authentic flourishing. You see, so like I went, even though I'm not an alcoholic, I went to Alcoholics Anonymous because I was that desperate to find community in a way that I could like land myself in myself. And I know that they have solid structures and I can use somebody else's structures to build on. But I went there and I was like, okay, so people get like, like when you go there, you can have conversation about what's wrong and what your problem is, or even how you've healed from that problem, but you can't really step into authentic flourishing as a group conversation. It's not something you're there for. And yeah, like you're talking about framework and structures. Yes. And so, yes. Because the, in a, like a, just a trauma community, it can be like a place to stay stuck in and stay in a maybe a victim mentality or just try to get stronger but with pure willpower and and um encouragement well oh, or, or yeah. turning it over to god even like you can have yeah. you know a trauma community that's spiritually oriented yeah yeah you know, you know what i mean and with that extra three third step with yeah. the like you say the structures and the frameworks yes. so delve a little bit more into that and how helpful is that let me just say the third one and then I'll answer your question. Okay. 
Okay. Because I'm, I'm showing you where the holes are in personal development. So that if you're in personal development and you're looking for answers and you still have an itch, you're like, Oh, that's what's going on. That's why this, this is what I need to supplement for myself in personal development. Mm -hmm. So in coaching communities, there's a few different things that are an issue. I've been a coach for more than 20 years. I was a coach when there were no coaches. Okay. So I, I know my coaching business, like inside out business mm -hmm. coaching and personal coaching, the limitations of a coaching community is often they don't want to talk about trauma. Okay. Come on, suck it up, do it, get there, do your work that you'll get a lot of cliches here. You can be the best, follow your bliss. You know, like these are all really good. I even wrote a book which ended up torturing me because I hadn't healed my trauma. I wrote this book called Reach Your Stars back in 2000. In the first 10 days of the year 2000, I wrote this book. <laughs> it took me more than a year to edit it after that. But Reach Your Stars is awesome. Reach Your Stars is based on, I love structure, okay? Because I like repetition. And when you have a good structure, you can have that. It's based on the I am formula for success. I am imagination, attitude, and motion. Well, I learned that I'm really good at imagination. I'm really good at motion. But the attitude, like I could have a positive attitude, but it was toxic positivity mm -hmm. and it was kicking my butt. And I didn't know it until like just a few years ago, I learned about complex PTSD and that cleaned out the depth of garbage that was inside of my belly. Mm -hmm. So, so like I had to put this book off to the side for a while because I could see other people winning with it, but it was torturing me because I couldn't get my confidence up with the letter A because I didn't know the darkness. See, I do joy-based living, but joy-based living is all based on the obstacles to joy and removing them. Because when you don't yeah. have a, when you don't have a bully on the playground, kids play. So <laughs> joy-based living is like removing your inner bully. That's oh, what gosh. It's I love that as well because I mean it's really good that you've explained a little bit more about the name as well, joy-based living. Yeah. Um, because some people might just think, oh well, it's all a joyous community, but yeah. Like you say, you need to remove that bully. And I think, you know, nobody goes through life un unscathed, do we? we? We've all got some kind of trauma that we've got to heal in, in some way. Let me tell you a little bit about the bully and then I'll and I'll come back to this again. Oh, so we can sorry, I've between lots of different things. No, this is exactly. This is so perfect. So the bully is the one who says you are not supposed to feel all your feelings. Hmm. See at the bottom, there's like powerlessness. See at the top, there's like joy. People are afraid of the extremes. Most people want to live in the middle of this emotional scale. This is an it's emotional level. What you said there is something like I'm twitching my crystal now. <laughs> because um, what you said there about the you're not supposed to feel the feelings that you're feeling. And that's really upsetting because it's you know i'm quite an emotional person and like i've been told a lot in my life to just don't be so emotional you know it's only this or you you know and and then you make your feelings lesser than other people and then it makes your pain lesser than other people you know there's always somebody worse than you so you're thinking well mine isn't valid then and i'm not worth talking about my thing because there's always somebody worse than so that that what you're saying right there are perfect words because a lot of people do that and the definition of trauma is disconnection from self mm. okay the definition of trauma is disconnection from self and so this sail on the ship is self-connection and what you just described are the words that people tell themselves as they disconnect from themselves and abandon themselves and or betray themselves and or shame themselves for having certain feelings. Oh, you shouldn't have that feeling. Other people have it so much worse. And then what? Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So when you do that conversation in your head, where does all that pain go? Well, it gets buried <laughs> gets buried and then it's like it feels like it's going to snap someday <laughs> so so two things happen either it gets buried or it comes out as a form of violence on someone else yeah yeah so for you and most women have a tendency to bury it 
and men, and we're talking about testosterone versus estrogen. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you see a movie and there's a bar fight, it's usually men in the bar. Yeah. Okay. It's usually men in yeah. a bar fight. Women will make themselves bad for feeling bad. Men will externalize feeling bad, the kind of feeling bad that comes from shame. So the wash of shame comes over and a woman will swallow it and a man will want to punch somebody. And that's a generalization. And we're in a woke culture. So I'm can I cuss on this station? This is going on my YouTube. Can I cuss? <laughs> of course you can. Okay. So I say, fuck that. Like I'm not into woke. I'm into real. And when I say that men are with more testosterone, women are, but we're also culturalized mm. to stuff our feelings as women and men are culturalized to don't be weak, go get out and fight. And now I'm seeing more men fall on themselves and fall down and implode and do like this. And so they feel less like a man and then they shame themselves more. Mm. So they're having more implosion these days because of woke. That's my experience. This isn't right or wrong. This isn't scientific research. This is my experience. And we swallow, when we swallow our emotions, we swallow our bigness. The bigness that wants to shine into the world gets swallowed in pain. And then we actually get physical symptoms. Like, I don't think emotions are weak. It's other people that might think that they're weak. But like, I've, be I've believed that. I've conformed to that in times in my life um and yeah I don't I think women might like bring themselves down and swallow it but they still feel like yes exploding at somebody but and that because they they don't do the release yes. um there's a kind of um jarring inside the body about it as well yeah, well, that's why a lot of a lot of people, a lot of women are suffering from anxiety. Yeah, and like we were talking a bit before as well about um, it might come out as physical pain as well. That's right. That's right. That's right. Let me finish this and let's go back. Okay, to go pain for it. I'm so I, sorry. You, I, I just want people as they're watching to go. Wait a minute, because I know we've got like yeah, a bunch of like ADHD and people. like OCD people. So, 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 I was just finishing saying about with coaching communities. One of the one of the uh, personal development. You'll usually get a group of people who are focused on one or two of the three, not all three. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. So in the coaching communities, um, they might pray, but they're likely to not go into deep trauma no, awareness. No. Okay. I think that all three are perfectly possible to have in an exceedingly awesome kick-ass winning group. Mm -hmm. And what that means is extreme self-acceptance, extreme awareness of connection with your divine nature, and extreme belief in the possibility of what is wanting to show up through you. Now, what's important is that you're the captain of this ship. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and the choices that you make are have to stand on a strong foundation. So I wrote a book called The 12 Practices. And this that's why you see 12 little squares on the bottom. Oh, yeah. See that? The, the squares on the bottom? and. Yeah. What this book helps a person do so they can stand on a strong foundation is a deep sense of embodiment. So as the opposite of dissociation, dissociation is a trauma response that most of us have, especially after COVID and stuff. So we know dissociation. We know how to leave our bodies and to Netflix binge and everything. This is what keeps your ship from flopping. This is the ballast. And when you have a strong sense of embodiment and honor, so we have something called feed the cow, feed your container of worthiness. And we feed each other's container of worthiness at Joy Based Living. That's what we train each other to do and to accept our own beauty, intelligence, power, and preciousness. Those four things are shamed out of us to where we are trained to look to an authority figure to tell us if we're beautiful, if we're intelligent, if we're powerful, and if we're precious. And there we go back to clergy, counseling, counselors, and, and I have a master's degree in counseling and, and coaches. So somebody's going to approve of you or you're going to win. And then you're going to have that beauty, intelligence, power, preciousness. If you think about a two-year-old or you think about a puppy, 
They own their beauty, their power, their intelligence, and their preciousness. And mm-hmm. we have, that's where joy comes from. Joy-based living is called joy-based living because joy is who we are. And everything that when we don't allow who we are to simply be, including the full range of emotions, we fuck ourselves. We screw ourselves. So it's about taking back our authority. So what it says on the bottom is with each topic, tune into your body and have your sensations and emotions with each topic, with each sale. How do you feel about your own self-connection? How do you feel about your own connection with divinity? Maybe you're an atheist. That's okay too. I'm not opposed to atheists. A lot of atheists have a stronger connection with the divine than people who are religious that I know because they know there's something bigger. It's your relationship to the mystery of life. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel about your own sense of possibility? Or are you stuck in a rut of staying exactly as you were because you're scared to change? So that's the trifecta of, 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 uh, of structure. Uh, And I'm going to say one more thing and then we'll come, we'll come to your thing. I had a teacher who narrowed down the entire personal development industry for me. And that's where I started joy-based living was because of his work. His name is Mario Martinez. He wrote a, a very intensive academic feeling book called mind body code. I wrote the 12 practices because the mind body code was just too academic, but he nailed it. And what he said is that when we're having a problem and we're in, in the inside, we're usually either dealing with shame, abandonment, or betrayal. Shame feels hot and humiliating. Abandonment feels cold. Betrayal feels hot and angry. Yeah. Mommy said she was going to give me a cookie if I smiled at the camera and she didn't give me a cookie. A three-year-old understands betrayal. They're pissed. They're pissed. Three-year-olds have a problem with their anger. We culturalize them to not feel angry. Yeah. Be nice. Be polite. That person just made a promise. Okay. So then there's three healing fields. And these are felt sensations. I want you to remember this. These are felt sensations. The healing fields for shame is um, honor. So honor cools a person. So we don't have enough honor in our culture. Honor looks like, I really appreciate what you did. Honor looks like, thank you for making a difference in my world. Honor, Mm -hmm. when I look it up on Google, is full of military and religious connotations, okay? But Mm -hmm. we need to make honor a personal experience. Honor heals shame. Empathy also heals shame. It's the combination. And is it honor uh, uh, for yourself as well? Yes, yes, 100%. 100%. It's honor for yourself and being surrounded by people who will honor you and who will receive honor from you. I am... I have struggled recently with the word honour um, and at my detriment, you know, just because I've struggled, um, you know, we were I was coming up with an affirmation with somebody and today is the day I will honour my pain was the affirmation that she proposed. And I really struggled with the word honour um, because... I, di- I don't know how. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Honor it. So we changed it to acknowledge. We changed the word honor to acknowledge, but I think that's something that I need to work on. You know, like you said, we don't have enough honor in our society, that's and we don't right. know how to do it. It's, it's the breakdown yeah. of our society. Yeah. So I've experienced that just this week that I don't have enough honor because I don't. I've not been taught how to do that. I've not That's been right. taught how to honor myself. You know, I can say thank you to other people. That's but, right. Yeah. Honey pie. That's why joy based living exists because I couldn't stand it anymore. Mm-hmm. I, I needed to be in relationship with people who would learn with me how to relate with honor, commitment, and loyalty. Oh, commitment is the healing field for abandonment and loyalty is the healing field for, uh, betrayal. Let me go back to honor with you. I'm going to make it real easy for you. I always use children and puppies because it's so easy. You have a little, you have a little boy, right? Yeah. Has he, have you ever uh, gone to his bed at some point because he has a nightmare? Um, yeah. Okay. When you, what, what do you do for him when he has a nightmare? Cuddle him and stroke his head and tell him that everything's going to be all right. And it's not. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, and so what you're doing is you're honoring his pain. 
Yeah. You're is not it, telling him that if he's really young, you're not telling him that the nightmare isn't real. If he's really young, you're just cuddling him. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's the first thing. It's the first natural. That's right. So, so you as a mother, he's mm -hmm. teaching you how to honor your pain by showing you how to honor his pain because you'll automatically do it for him. Mm -hmm. So if you look at your own pain and go, oh my gosh, there's part of me. This is like, you got it. You got it. Yeah. 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 See what you mean. Yeah. Okay. Now I want you to notice something and the viewers can watch this also is that right now, Emma, this is very typical as I'm working with anybody and people who are in my groups you have more color in your face. You also have tears in your eyes. When we have um, when we have tears in our eyes or we have laughter, neurons are being built in our brain. Mm. We are we are actually generating new experiences. You're actually transforming right now. <laughs> and and this is actually how lasting change gets created in the brain. And and most of the time when I'm working with anybody, they will physically, and now with Zoom, we all get to see ourselves. They will physically go from more pale color to a more colorful. Look, your face looks more healthy. Yeah, I did just get it then. I did just like understand that I was I, like, yeah, like you say, honoring his pain. So I need to honor my pain by saying it's there. I recognize it's there. I recognize you've gone through that or you're going through that. And I'm here for you and it's okay. And yeah, so, you know, like you say, you know, we say the inner child is inside of us, you know, there's always that there as well. We need to keep honoring that child. The inner child is expressions of all these things. Ah. So whatever you're uncomfortable with feeling, let's say it's appreciation for yourself. Mm -hmm. Your inner child is going to keep giving you messages. The inner child is just the, the representation of the feeling that's being stuffed. It just wants to be held. It doesn't want to be healed. It just wants to be held. The feeling just wants to be held. Yeah. It wants to be honored. It wants to not be abandoned. It wants to not be betrayed. It wants honor, commitment, and loyalty. Like, will you, will you be let yourself experience your own self-appreciation? Honor, commitment, and loyalty. They are really and that's what we do through this whole all these 12 practices and self-reflections to create a life that's true to your soul and master the art of authentic connection. Because let's say, for example, you were not as open as you are. <laughs> and I try to honor you and I tell you I really appreciate you, and you blow me off. That actually hurts. You know, when you want to love somebody and the love doesn't land in them there's a pain inside of you. So my entire goal, my dream come true yeah. is that I've created a community where people like, let's say, let's say you're in the center. Let's say you have a joy based living community. You would be in the center and then you'd have all these lights around you who are also doing the 12 practices. But what's more important than the lights is the lines between them. Yeah. And the lines between them are the structures of honor, commitment, and loyalty, and an absence of shame, abandonment, betrayal. But that doesn't mean we don't screw up. Practice number one includes the phrase imperfect and awesome. Imperfect and awesome, yeah. Imperfect and awesome. And we also have a phrase that I got from Anne Lamott called shitty first drafts. That let's say you do something and I walk away and I'm like, oh my God, you know, did she just say that because she doesn't like me and I'm telling myself this shitty story, right? And I can call you and go, I'm telling myself this story that I said something and you really hated it and you don't like me. And then you get to correct it. And so we learn to edit our relation. We learn to edit our own stories that we're telling ourselves about ourselves. Or I could say to you, you know, you said this thing to me and I, you know, cause I use F-bombs a lot. So my people have to come to me sometimes and go, when you said that, it made me really uncomfortable. And I go, thank you for telling me because I'm not going to stop using F-bombs. But I never use them to attack somebody ever, 
ever. I, n- I never say you're a fucker. I, n- I never, never. But I get, but you know, Brene Brown, who's one of the greatest shame researchers on the planet, she says uh, prayer and cussing are not mutually exclusive. And the more I see people pray, the more I see people cuss. Like, like that's not true for everyone. But in my circle, yeah. as people learn to pray, they also learn to cuss. As people learn to, you know, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, my God, they start seeing shame everywhere. Mm-hmm. Throughout media, throughout our regular conversations. Oh, I'm such an idiot. I'm so within, stupid. Within your groups, um, do you create a safety? Yes. That people can say, that made me feel like that or you you know that's the whole point yeah that's a really hard thing to find to have a circle like that or a group like that and that is why it's my dream to have joy-based living circles 100 years from now in every city in the world there's thousands of groups run by peers oh that's the other disadvantage of coaching circles really good coaching circles are often either really expensive and or limited to a very short duration of time. And so you build these relationships and then they're gone. Trauma circles, you can keep going for the rest of your life as long as uh, you still admit to having that problem, whether it's grief or alcoholism or codependency. So you can get this for free. But I needed a group where I could have all three. And all three are simply our natural state of being. And let me tell you what it looks like. A little kid hurts another kid because they hit them by accident in a playground and they come up and they go, oh, I'm sorry. And they give it a kiss. That's <laughs> missing a boo-boo. And all of a sudden the other kid's not traumatized. They're, 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 their foot might hurt, but they're not traumatized anymore. They don't feel abandoned. Yeah, it was made better. That's right. Spirituality. Do you ever see a little kid pray and they like sit like this and then you join them because they're so sincere? It's natural. Kids understand this. And then number three, coaching. Do you ever see like little kids? I'm not talking about once they learn to compete and like be jerks, but little kids, yay, look at me on the slide, yay. And as adults, we're like, oh no, no, I shouldn't have the spotlight on me, blah, blah, blah. Fuck, I need the spotlight on me. You need the spotlight on you, but how terrified are we of that 100%? Oh gosh. Right, but this is natural. We all want to be seen and it's not any, like me right now, you're interviewing me to show off some of my skills, to spotlight some of my skills. It is no different than me going, look at me on the slide. Mommy, look, mommy, look. I want mommy to look. Everybody else in the, in the playground could be there, but I want mommy. I want, and you're not my mommy, but I mean, like I want to be, but what is this? Look, look at me going down the side. I've created these really cool things. And you're like, oh my God, that's really cool. Oh my God, that's really cool. And But it's no different than a little kid just going, look at me on the swing. That's who you were when you were little. We all want that. We all want that. We all want that. That's why it's the trifecta. So I wanted groups of people at, at a minimal cost. Like right now, like so I have groups going on now of of where I'm teaching things, where people can start to meet each other uh, at a place called patreon.com. Yeah. I'm an, art, I'm an artist because of everything behind me. You can see that I do art. Not all this is my art, but I'm artistic. I'm colorful. Yeah. I read an article recently about how it was a, an article from like South India. And it was talking about how the West is afraid of color. And all I look at all these cars in the last 20 years, and I'm so disgusted by it. They're all black or white. I miss cars that are like orange and green yeah. and purple. Do you know why the West is afraid of color? Because they want to, they don't want to stand out or they- That's right, that's right, take it deeper. Say, not to be criticized by other people. That's right, take it deeper. Um. Yeah, because they're scared of what somebody else might say. They're afraid of their emotions. Yeah. We've been taught to conform one of my favorite people in the world, who's one of my heroes. I love having heroes, please. I hope you have heroes. Her name is Iris Apfel. Yes. And she is a fashion designer and she did like design work for like the Kennedys in the White House. Her and her husband, they traveled the world. She is now mentoring people in New York City to come back to textiles and art. We've Mm -hmm. lost it to computers and to conformity. So she used to prefer shopping in the Harlem district district of New York, where 
the black people would go and the women after church would wear their big hats and colorful outfits. She would shop there and look at her necklaces. They, they all yeah. make noise, right? They all like clink together. And uh, because she would prefer to go there than, than what she called the conformist area where it's really expensive and you buy things that cause you to conform. Yes. The expensive conformist area. And we're afraid of not conforming because we're afraid of our emotions. Mm -hmm. Everything you said was right, but this is what's underneath it. Embodying our emotions causes us to be authentic. Authenticity causes us to stand out. And in the West, we're terrified. We need the East. We need Indian people. I see, we need I see what you mean. Yeah, that expressiveness. Yes. Is it's squashed because you're scared of it's squashed and then we and then we medicate so we don't have to feel how horrible we feel inside so i don't like medicating i would prefer to embody all my feelings and when you embody all your feel i've had people get off of drugs and medication mm -hmm. like really quick and i don't tell them to i don't tell them don't drink alcohol i don't i don't tell anybody because every person who's doing an addiction is doing it because they're in pain and because they're stuffing their pain. So all of a sudden they get color in their face and they're feeling their pain and they're like, oh, I don't have to run from this. No, you don't have to run from this. You're not going to tell me not to drink. No, I'm not. Oh, do you know I'm not taking my, my sleeping pills anymore? I'm not surprised that you're not taking your sleeping pills anymore because you're being a good mom to yourself. You're being a yeah. good dad to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And you've made that pain okay to feel and to honor yes. and you're still alive, you know? And, you know, I, I understand how people feel like if, you know, something happens and it's really hard to emotionally deal with, um, you know, I've done it myself where I think I need to just get a bottle of wine and I need to watch Netflix and I need to like, oh. out. Yeah. Cool. yeah. This is what you're, going you're teaching people and you're going through with people and and giving them a hug instead of telling them well you've got a plan it'll be okay what just, just you know see the anger coming in my face like 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 that like you like to me that that the anger i get is almost like someone just brought a gun into the mm -hmm. room like yeah. get the fuck out. Like those cliches, those cliches sound so helpful, but they are, they are killers. Well, you know, a doctor said that to me today. <laughs> what? You've got a plan. Um, and um, come, come back in about four weeks if you're struggling, you know? Well, <laughs> Well, okay, there's context it's here. The, the, words, the, words, the, words, the words you've got to plan aren't bad. But the words, uh, if somebody says, I'm in so much pain, and then they just go, look, here are some drugs. You've got to plan. Come back in four weeks. They've completely blown you off. So one of the keys to mm -hmm. healing trauma, and my one of my favorite teachers is Dr. Gabor Mate, who wrote a book called Scattered about ADHD. He's amazing. Gabor Mate. And uh, a lot of the people in the ADHD communities don't like him because he doesn't, he, he promotes listening he to what's trauma, going on the thing on the inside. Um, wait, wait, wait. There was something you said. There was something you said about the plan, about uh, you have a plan, you have a plan. Shoot, I might have lost it. And when we're talking about hugging instead of just saying, well, you'll be okay. When you do that, you're giving yourself the sense of safety. Oh yes, yes, yes. It was about doctors. Cause he's a doctor. He was an MD for many, many years. And he worked with people with addiction and trauma in, in Toronto for many years. He's in Canada. Um, he's training people to teach their doctors. To oh, ask, yes. To ask them the question. What happened to you? Mm -hmm. what happened to you is the gateway to healing trauma. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. It's like, this completely makes sense. That's yeah. why I, that's why I created it because, <laughs> because like, as you're listening, but you, you can see Emma from this conversation that even though this makes sense, it requires interaction and desire 
for somebody to get it. Like you want this. Mm -hmm. You, I mean, you want this conversation. You want this, you want this, uh, you have a hunger for what I'm offering and a hunger for the people in your life to have what I'm offering. And so there's a desire and that is interaction. And that's like a, I like to say, uh, if somebody doesn't have desire, it's like I there's a bald tire on a slick road. Like nothing I say is going to land. They're just going to slip yeah. and slide or they're yeah. just going to dissociate. Like, so like, this, this, this is grit. This, like you're showing up with tires that have tread and I'm like, let's go. Let's do. There's, there's, there's like a, the, 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 the bond between us in this conversation is filled with life. Yes. And that's a requirement for this. And I want life to say, that we're fighting for, to, and we want more joy in our life as well. Well, people have to want it. Not everybody does. Everybody says that they does, but not everybody does. There's two things well, I want yeah, to say. Yeah, not that. everybody does. Not everybody does. Um, Safety. And maybe it's a matter of time. Um, so Wait. how can people join a joy based living circle or collaborate with you and start one or how does it work? I'll say that after I say one more thing. Okay. You asked me about safety. Yeah. I cannot create safety for anyone. Mm -hmm. I can create environments where a plant can grow their roots and grow a pie. But if someone insists inside themselves that they are not safe, it's not for me or anybody at Joy Based Living to change that. I need to make that really clear. I'm not selling safety. In fact, all the playfulness behind me can fool people into thinking that it's all sweet and fluffy where you have just experienced a little portion of the heat that comes on when people are just honest and authentic. And when people feel that honesty and authenticity, they don't always feel safe. In fact, often they don't. And they have to get their grit up and their courage up to go, I want joy-based living and I'm willing to walk through the fire of discomfort and feelings of lack of safety in order to claim my whole self. So I have two mm -hmm. ways people can get in touch with, with me that are, that are really good. I'm really hanging out a lot in Facebook at a group called that I created called I Love Authenticity. Okay. And the parentheses uh, after that is especially after deep healing. Because what mm -hmm. I've discovered is that people who want joy, who are not willing to engage a conversation of trauma awareness are not good for me and I'm not good for them. I will scare them and frighten them and they will run very fast and they will say, you fooled me. I thought you were all fluffy. I need to make it clear right up front that I'm not. And in fact, uh, I want to welcome everyone to go to get their free copy. This is very important. And this is important whether you think you have trauma or you don't, because I think we all can agree that the world is in a big state of trauma. So if we're not experiencing trauma, we know someone who is. I have a free book called Sanctuary at the right. Joy Based Living website. If you just go to joybaseliving.com and you click on newsletter and just sign up for the newsletter and you'll get a download of this book. It's like 72 pages or 75 pages. I don't remember. And, um, what this book has, and it's free, it's, it's a uh, four mantras for thriving after emotional trauma. Uh, did I lose you? No, I've just put joybaseliving.com. Is that the right one? Joybaseliving.com. Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, so so at joybaseliving.com, click newsletter and you will then sign up for the newsletter and you'll get this for free. This is not an encyclopedia. It is a gateway with language that in the first five pages, you will get language to deal with yourself and other people who are dealing with trauma. Words like emotional flashbacks. As a humanity, every human needs to know those words so that when someone's going through a difficult moment, you can help them. So like one of my members helped me at a fairy tale event that I did. She was my little uh, elf helper. And I was reading some of my fairy tales to a group of children at an art fair. And I thought she had such a great day. 
And two days later, she said, I want you to know that Saturday was really traumatizing for me. And I was like, what? I thought you were having fun. She was uh, a nurse at NICU, which is, uh, um, it's an infant ICU unit for 40 mm -hmm. years. And all these dads were coming and holding little kids who were like three years old. She goes, they reminded me of being in the hospital and being with all these kids who were really sick or dying. And um, I never grieved those children um, while I was in the hospital working there because I just had to be strong as a nurse. And it all flashed back to her. So she said, Debbie, I had emotional flashbacks all day and Sunday was horrible for me. Now, if she wasn't able to use those words with me, we both would have been stuck and I might have never asked her to come back to another fairy tale thing again. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand? Do you hear you a me? blockage in your friendship and a blockage for her to not have processed it in the That's real right. world now as well? That's right. That's right. And so in this conversation, which we haven't even been together for an hour, you have learned a ton of language. And so this is this has got language in it. Um, you can also download the emotional ladder. I have this at the website. It's also for free. You might have to dig a little, but it's there somewhere. Um, and there's uh, one more thing. If you want to support my work and you want to experience some of my work, you can't just join a circle. The, the circles that we have are people who've done some of their homework. So I've created a platform where people could actually learn how to do this. Um, to do some of these things. And so um, I have a club mm -hmm. and it's patreon.com forward slash joy based living. Patreon, P A T R E O N, patreon.com forward slash joy based living. And um, I have classes and gatherings uh, where people can practice washing their brains, like going through a car wash, instead of being brainwashed, they're washing their brains. And it is extreme self-acceptance on steroids. Um, and I'm having one coming up this Sunday. And so you can just go to patreon.com. You can support me at any level and you will be invited. Um, I'm creating a space where it, rather than it being transactional oriented, I did this for you. So you pay me this much. It's more relationship oriented. It's more like Debbie Happy Cohen. I love what you're doing, what you're doing. And I want to support you at any level. And oh my gosh, it'll be so cool to take some classes with you and get to know some of the people that, that you're working with and we can come together and get to know each other. And so we're going to be having zoom calls that are interactive that feel Emma, uh, kind of mm -hmm. like this and, and maybe a little bit lighter version but, but kind of like this. And so people will get color back into their faces as they practice coming into acceptance of all their emotions um, and, and filling in the gaps in their own personal development where they can ask questions. And um, I, I'm kind of like a, a director, librarian, concierge. And so somebody says, this is the problem I'm having after I've done these years of personal development. And I yeah. can probably point them to the right book or teaching, and it might not be mine, um, that, that can help fill that hole because I just want people to feel whole. Uh, the inner circle group I have is called Wholehearted Networking, and we've been working together now for a few years, and new people are invited into it, but it's by invitation only. And the best way to get an invitation, if you don't already know me, is by joining Patreon. And this way I know that you're in the game and you're not just like, I just want to join a group and see if I like it. No, come join and see if you like hanging out with me. And if you do, and if you want a deeper experience, um, wholehearted networking is my version of uh, a 12 step program that's based on wholeheartedness and joy. Absolutely love that. Um, I've just found your uh, Patreon as well. Um, so I'm gonna put that up um, if that's the best place as well. Obviously, they can hang out with you on Facebook, but this is like yeah, this is where the this is where the grit is. At Facebook, I'm a lot more um, user friendly oh, yeah. for more people. If you want some grit and you want like real live experience, Patreon. I love how you put the uh, the deep dives, play dates, laughter on Zoom. Uh, so you've got those sessions to join in as well. Yeah, and that's on Patreon. Yep. Oh, I'm so excited. 
I'm so yeah, excited. it is incredible what you're doing, and just in that little space of things that you do, it's amazing. And what I really like is, oh, I've, uh, what I really like is how you use, uh, like, like you say, children, animals, and and those examples yes. that really like, oh, I yes. get it. <laughs> Yes, it makes you become natural again. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you don't even need as much makeup because you have more color in your face. And you're, you're, what happens is you'll start also noticing the sparkle in people's eyes. So if you look at the beginning of our interview and then look after, you'll see like during our interview, you started getting more sparkles in your eyes. That, yeah. that's, what, that's what we do. And imagine if we had a world of people, even if it wasn't the whole world, but we had a world of people, like a, a subculture of people all doing that for each other because my deal was I don't want to just be the leader I want to be in a, in a field of reciprocity yeah so that and I like you say you got on your patreon as well there's something called ripple yes so it's that ripple effect of joy based living yes yes I can't wait I'm just starting ripple it's just launching now uh ripple is based on the idea that when you have a pen that works. By the way, the only sin at Joy Based Living is to have pens around you that don't work. Do not let me catch you no. having a pen that doesn't <laughs> work. Okay, because I will, Just you will be on. in so much trouble with me. You get a pen and a, and a piece of paper or, or some stationery <laughs> and you write notes of appreciation. A note of appreciation encompasses the integration. I'm sounding all academic now all 12 practices. When you write a note of appreciation, you're practicing honor, you're practicing embodiment, you're practicing tribe, you're practicing uh, trajectory, you're creating a better world. I take Jonathan out to the grocery store and to restaurants. I cannot <laughs> tell you how much joy this puppet brings people, but he doesn't like to be called a puppet because he's not really a puppet. He's alive, but don't tell him. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Jonathan. Listen, close your ears. But, okay, another with Jonathan. The, the ripple, the ripple, the ripple, the ripple is the act of appreciation. I feel like writing a note to my husband. You just made my day. That's what I really like, feel urged to do right now from you saying that. Tell us what, <laughs> tell us, tell us what you love about your husband, what you want to appreciate about him. Um, my husband is the most supportive person in my life and he picks up on when I'm finding things hard and he'll do the little things like make me tea or, you know, buy me flowers. He bought me flowers yesterday. And so I just really love that he is um, a caring, supportive person and will do the little things that are actually so huge. <laughs> would, you, would you like me to offer you a challenge along with praise? Yeah. Okay. So first of all, a note of appreciation to your husband sounds like gold. Mm -hmm. that's, that's better than, that's better than jewelry. My challenge to you is to take whatever kind of paper that you were having for him, whether it's a piece of stationery or whatever, get a second one and write a note of appreciation to yourself. Uh. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I know why you called that a challenge. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm very clear about that. I'm very clear yeah. about that. And so, and and that's yeah, the, <laughs> and so so what the, the advantage here is that all the resistances that come up, so the brainwashing that I do, the brain cleansing that I do from all the brainwashing, because the brainwashing is that you've been brainwashed to not feel appreciation to yourself. That actually required brainwashing. Because if you ask a little th three year old, what do you love about yourself? They will tell you everything down to their little toes. Okay. So you had to be brainwashed to stop doing that. You had to be told to shut up, sit down. Don't be so big. Don't be so blah, blah, blah. And then we stuff, we swallow our bigness when we do that. And we want our bigness to shine. So hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here's what's going on. The opportunity for you is to write down all your objections on another sheet of paper. I don't want to write my appreciation note because I'm not worth it, because I'm whatever. Whatever you want to say, ta, 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 ta. 
that list of objections is gold for you because then you get to see what's in the way and then you get to release. Well, how do I feel about thinking I'm not good enough? Well, that feels like, uh, uh, it, I feel angry. I feel hatred about that. I feel powerless about that. You start writing what you feel about those objections. Yeah. And each one of those objections becomes, becomes like a, uh, 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 what do you call it? Hold on. Sorry, I'm looking for the I'm word. writing down my homework at this time. <laughs> oh, you're such a, you're so good. You're being coachable. So on the bottom of the Statue of Liberty, she is yeah. actually escaping from uh, shackles. Oh, yes. Yeah. And there's actually a book called Her Right Foot. It's a children's book called Her Right Foot. It says, did you know Lady Liberty is not standing still? Her right foot steps forward, breaking the chains. Every okay. one of these things on your list, and we're speaking to the listeners right now too, because they I know that people who are watching this are mm -hmm. going to do this assignment too, is every one of those things that you write as an objection to your appreciation note, which we're going to be writing in the Ripple group, appreciation notes, uh -huh. every one of those objections is your shackles. Yeah. And every time you accept how you feel, about those shackles, those shackles start melting because they're made of ice. I love that. It's so natural and it's so beautiful. And you're ba basically giving a kiss to your inner boo-boos. Mm -hmm. Challenge, right? An appreciation note to yourself. Yes. Yes. Let's do it, everybody. So, everybody who's watching, I would love you to do this challenge and share this video so somebody else can do this challenge and we will start a ripple effect. Um, and let's all live in this joy based living. Um, and get yourself over to uh, Patreon dash um, slash um, is it joy based living? Yes, patreon.com um, Patreon forward slash joy based living. I'm really excited about that because there's um, three good options on there for anybody to get involved in as well. Um, and when you have done your letter of appreciation to yourself, um, pop a comment below and say, tick, I have done it. Yes. And let us know. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yes. I, I'll say some closing words because I feel like we're coming to a close. Is that right? Yeah. So I hear your excitement about patreon.com and I'm so excited that you're excited. So I want to say something about Patreon that makes me really, really excited is that it was created for creators to be able to support themselves. And if you remember, like in the old days, the arts were supported by patrons, right? Well, my art is you. My art is you, your palette of emotions, your palette of desires, your palette of experiences with your own sense of divinity and fullness of being. You are my art. And together we co-create the very best you emerging. And I love being at Patreon because Patreon supports creators and I am an artist of people. Absolutely, you are. <laughs> you're Thank so you. beautiful. Thank you. I love what you're doing and I really appreciate it. Just imagine, you know, that little cog has turned in me and just imagine how many people if all those little cogs can be turned, like how much better a place that we can create and you're starting the cogs. I love it. Thank you. Um, so thank you so much, Debbie Happy Cohen, for uh, being with me on this interview slash chat slash coaching session. Um, I really appreciate your time and I would encourage everybody to get um, across to Patreon or the Facebook group, get in touch with you. And let's get on to this movement, guys. Um, it's worth it for our world. So um, one last word from you, Debbie. 
It's going to make me cry and it's kind of deep. Is that okay? Okay. I've got a tissue. <laughs> One of the things that like breaks my heart is seeing so many school shootings in, in the United States. And that's what happens when we stuff our bigness and it doesn't have a place to go. We implode and we explode. And most people mm -hmm. have not made the connection between the, the power of the human spirit is so strong that when it's stuffed, when it's stuffed, it is an act of violence. And that violence has to come out somehow. And it's not about guns. It's not about medication. It's not about labels. It's about everything we talked about today. So this little thing called Ripple, which looks really sweet, and Joy Base Living, which looks so cute, it comes from a real depth of understanding what makes people want to show up and be kind and be safe and create safety and create love. And it's not hippieville. This is real stuff. This is real stuff. And we have to create those environments for ourselves and for each other in order to have a better world. And that's this why is we're the proper so education good. that people need, you know. This is the education that people need. And if mothers take a stand to give this to their children, we can actually start standing for creating that world. And that's why I work so hard. Yeah, no mother wants their children to have all those things stuffed down and then it to explode like that. I feel my heart goes out to every family who has children in schools. The amount of trauma that they have to endure every single day, not knowing if there's going to be a shooting in their children's school is debilitating. It is debilitating. And, and they, and they function so like, Oh my God, I don't know how they get, they power through every day. They power through the day because they have to. And then they go, I don't know why I can't fall asleep at night. I don't know why I have so much anxiety. Well, fuck. So that's where that's at. And those are my, those are my really dark, but hopeful final words, because my prayer, my hope is that the pain is so dark that people just go, you know what? Enough. And now I have something that I can actually do about it. And I could put 12 practices on my refrigerator and I could put feeling things on my refrigerator and I could put, I'm like the, the refrigerator, you know, art queen. At this I like point. to put it on top of my uh, cupboard where my cup of teas are. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's exactly right. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, that's right. And because I want peace in your heart. And when you have peace in your heart, I'm never coaching just you, Emma. I'm coaching yeah. your little boy. I'm coaching your husband. I've had husbands come on Zoom coaching sessions and go, Debbie, I just have to tell you, thank you so much for working with my wife. Oh. I'm never working with the person who's in front of me. So I'm good. working with all the people that you ripple to. And as you get this, then you become your own center of your own ripple. And that's my dream for you, Emma. And that's my dream for everybody watching this. It's your power, not mine, that makes this work. Amazing. Thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I'm sure we'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, Emma. Thank you.